Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is, at Egberto Williams. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show today. Please do remember this is a call-in show, and I would love to hear from you guys. The telephone number is 646-716-5812. Again, that is 646-716-5812. Welcome aboard, Dolores Bernice McLan. Burns McLan, how are you doing? Welcome aboard. Michael Dean Newton, welcome aboard. Randall VIP, welcome aboard and of course michael redname welcome aboard thank you guys for all the input that you all give before the show during the show and after the show please do remember folks this is absolutely positively your show you dictate where we go you dictate all of the times remember if you want specific things covered you give us uh, email at info at politics done right dot com and of course you can also reach us right here and put your messages right there under the live show that we have here do remember, folks, this is a call-in show. Again, 646-716-5812. And also remember, this is something you must share. Progressive media has a very hard time in this country because all our media is governed by the corporatocracy unless you share it on the avenues that you control, meaning social media and otherwise, meaning social media, emails, and everything. Share these programs so that other people can get the knowledge that we together come with. Please also do remember, folks, that this is a show that is brought to you, to put it all bluntly, out of the will of the people. And what we want to ask you is to do remember that these shows need your support. So before we get started with the program, just let me do a quick pitch, and that is to ask you to go to patreon.com slash politics done right. Again, that is patreon.com slash politics done right. Or I'm sorry, patreon.com slash politics done right. That is patreon.com at politics done right. And if you are so kind to go ahead and help support this show, I'll do this later on in the show as well. But right now, let's go ahead and get busy with the show. For those that are just coming in, please do remember to go ahead and share the show. Today, we have a great topic to cover. The topic that we want to cover today is Hillary Clinton. All of you who, who followed my programs for all these years know that I'm not particularly a centrist. I'm not particularly an establishment-type Democrat. But uh, what I try to do all of the times is to be fair, as fair as one can be. Today our topic is Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton made some very true statements out there in uh, India. And I tell you one thing. The woman is absolutely right in the comments that she made. And in these comments that, we ma that she made, it is sad to see many folks, and, and it, this goes from the left side of the Democratic Party all the way up to the center of the Democratic Party, to the right side of the Democratic Party. What I saw on Twitter was shameful. Uh, what I saw on Twitter were too many people attacking this woman for making a fact-based statement. You don't have to like her policies. You don't have to like her politics. You don't have to like any of this. But when somebody makes a statement, remember, the thing about Democrats and progressives is that you follow what the f where the facts take you. You follow where things take you. That's who we are as progressives. That's who we are. We lead by example. And when we lead by examples, we have other folks following and falling into line with progressive values. So again, the, sub, the title of the show today is Hillary Clinton, Hold a Truth Few Wanted to Hear but Needed to Reveal, Needed to be Revealed. And that is definitely so. Subtitle, Hillary Clinton hit the nail on the head. Hillary Clinton hit the nail on the head. Before I go any further, for those new folks that have just migrated in, I ask of thee, share the show. Share it on your timeline. Share it on your page. Share it on your, uh, share it on your wall. It is important for us to keep this thing going in order to beat a centralized media based on the corporatocracy. Anyhow, folks, Hillary Clinton is visiting India. 
as many of you know. She had a couple of falls. People made a little bit of fun of her or whatever. You know, she's, you know, uh, Hillary kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you remember Ford, um, President Ford, the Republican uh, Ford, whoever so often would stumble off the plane or stumble down or whatever. That's exactly how she acts these days. But you know what? And as much as I'm not a supporter, I like her gumption. I like the way that she's not allowing anyone to shut, up, shut her up. And in fact, I've written blogs where I've said, okay, Hillary, it's time for you to be quiet. And Hillary supporters would come out and say, who the hell are you to tell this woman to be quiet? She can do as she pleases, and she's earned the right to do as she pleases, to which I said and I responded, you know what? I take that back. You're absolutely right. Anyhow, Hillary Clinton is visiting India. She has been making a lot of the news in the, pro- a lot of news in the process. But her statements about the parts of America that voted for Donald Trump are spot on. Many are raising hell and righteous indignation about her telling the truth. We are discussing. We are discussing why her statement is true. We will also talk about what should be done to mitigate that reality. Because that reality is going to stay with us. And unless we break that cycle that's occurring in the middle of the country, unless we break it, Uh, We are not going to be able to govern in such a manner that we can affect the policies that are necessary for us to move forward. Student loan, uh, guaranteed basic income, universal health care, all these issues, rebuilding the infrastructure, all these issues require more than 50 plus 1. It requires a 40-60 split or better so that we can have the wherewithal. Actually, it's better than a 40-60 split because remember, when we had a 40-50 split, we still couldn't get a public option onto our health care system. So anyhow, before I jump into the Hillary Clinton blog of the week, which is going to be good, so stick around, don't run away. Blog of the week is coming up. The news today, Senor Tillerson, the great Tillerson, the great state, uh, uh, what is he, head of state, or what Hillary Clinton was before, Secretary of State, he was fired by tweet today. Sad, but th- to think that the President of the United States would fire somebody via a tweet is sad, but it's exactly what we understand occurred today. The man didn't know he was gone. And it's kind of interesting because there's a, there's a, there's a little fusion uh, s- story that we're not sure about here. Some people are actually saying that he was fired on Friday, so he knew he was fired, so he was free to speak about Russia. And if you notice, he criticized Russia dearly when he said that he knew that Russia is the one who poisoned the, the two spies in, 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 in the UK. And, they also, and he also made a statement to the fact that it is very hard uh, currently to work with uh, Russia as if Russia isn't uh, you know, cooperating with what the United States uh, want, want to get done in Syria and other places. Of course, uh, you know, Trump never speaks out against uh, Russia because we know that there's likely, there, there are likely a lot of reasons why he's not speaking out. My theory again and folks you know i only speak fact and inf- fact based information if i'm if my ma- information is not fact based i specifically tell you it's opinion my opinion is that uh, our president is one of the masterful the most ma- masterful launderers in on the planet i mean anybody who's been through bankruptcy the amount of times that this president has who cannot get a loan in the united states and who gets loans all over from again from russian oligarchs through uh, uh, Banco Deutsche or whichever bank it is, it means more than likely that particular person is laundering money. But again, that is just conjecture on my part. So I'm, sp- I'm specifying to my listeners that that is conjecture. But if I'm proven right, I'll say, didn't I, didn't I surmise that when we used to talk? Didn't I surmise that? Well, he also lost another uh, aide. His most closest aide uh, was pulled out of the White House today. Not in chains, but pulled out of the White House. And the claim is that this particular person had severe, severe financial improprieties. So think about that. All these people that, are, that have improprieties or whatever, they can't even get security clearance in the White House of the person who said, I am going to clean the swamp. I am going to clean the swamp. Well, the swamp isn't getting clean right now, folks. The ones that are just coming on, please do remember, share our programs on your Facebook wall, your Facebook page, or make sure to email the links, etc., etc., etc. But, folks, do you know what time it is?
It's time for the weekly blog post. Okay, we are going to our weekly blog post. We're going to our weekly blog post. Welcome aboard, Vanessa Freeman. Welcome aboard, uh, Michael Dean Newton. Welcome aboard. Okay, the title of the blog of the week is Hillary, Clin Hillary Clinton Taking Flack for Making a Factual Statement About 2016 Election. And again, a lot of newcomers coming on. For those who know uh, about politics and right, for those who know me, you know I was a delegate for Bernie Sanders in Philadelphia. So I was a Bernie Sanders delegate. Of course, I subsequently voted for Hillary Clinton uh, because I thought that was the best choice given the choices that we had. And I think the responsible thing to do uh, was to do that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the problems that we are having right now. There are a lot of people who thought during that election that it is Hillary or nothing. I remember it was uh, Bernie or Bust. I, I brought the, the people, the founders of Bernie and Bust onto my show as well uh, to talk about why I didn't believe that was the right thing to do. And enough people did that such that we have what we have today. And in as much as Hillary, in my opinion, would not have been the best choice because, again, there are certain things that are systemic in nature to our country that will only be solved with uh, a, a type of economy that Hillary doesn't really support. Uh, but again, it would ha she would have been a much better choice than Donald Trump. We would not have the problems that we're having in the Affordable Care Act right now. But anyhow, title of the show, Hillary Clinton taking flack for making a factual statement about 2016 election. And the subtitle is, we must examine Hillary Clinton's factual statement in more detail. Anyhow, while I am not a Hillary Clinton fan, the flag she is taking for hurting the feelings of a few for a factual statement is entirely on fear. It is being spun as sour grapes when instead it should be present at a more critical question. It should present a more critical question. And here's why. Look, Hillary Clinton point, uh, point, uh, pointing out, uh, Hillary Clinton pointed out the realities of the states that did not vote for her is essential. It helps analyze what happened in 2016. Let me read to you one of the things that they said, uh, one of the tweets said about Hillary Clinton. It said, Bitter Hillary Clinton suggests to audience in Mumbai, India, that voters who support, supported Trump in 2016 did so because they didn't like black people getting rights or women getting jobs. She alluded to some issues of demographics, but it wasn't quite as this tweet said. What Hillary mentioned in Mumbai is exactly right. Let me read what she said. Here is what Clinton said verbatim. If one looks at the map of the United States, Hillary Clinton said, there is all that red in the middle where Trump won. I win the coast. I win Illinois, Minnesota, places like that. But what the map doesn't show you is what is that I won the places that represent two-thirds of America's gross domestic product, GDP. So, I won the places that are optimistic, diverse, dynamic, moving forward and his whole campaign making america great was looking backwards let me stop for a second because i didn't put something that i just thought about in the blog of the week but if you doubt that his campaign was looking backwards look at the things that he talks about coal returning coal jobs returning oil jobs returning these types of manufacturing that human beings don't really do anymore. In other words, the coal jobs that they're speaking about are, are going to be done by machines. With all this hoopla that he talked about, coal jobs, I think the coal mine that opened up in Ohio or one of those states employed 100 people. A drop in the bucket for what we're talking about. Likewise, if we look at manufacturing, most manufacturing folks are going to be done by robots. I'm going to talk a little bit about you know all these type of issues later on because we don't need to be talking about Oh, let's go back to the past as far as, 
getting this type of infrastructure done or getting this type of uh, coal or energy. We need to talk about a new economy where people can excel without as much work given our current level of efficiencies, but we can get there later on. Anyway, so I won in places that are optimistic. This is Hillary speaking now. So I run in places that are optimistic, diverse, dynamic, moving forward. And his whole campaign, Make America Great, was looking backward. You know, you didn't like black people getting rights. You didn't like women getting jobs. You don't want to see that Indian Americans succeeding more than you are. Whatever your problem is, I am going to solve it. So it was a symptom, but it was also a cause because having someone run for president who voices those ideas who rejects so much of the American history and our values was also the underlying cause as well. I'm not going to let Hillary off the hook. And for your Hillary supporters, don't hate me for saying what I'm going to say. But I must say it because we have to be honest in all the reasons Hillary lost or lost. So here's the deal. That statement Hillary made is absolutely correct. Hillary should have won this election even as bad as a candidate that Hillary was. Hillary didn't campaign in Wisconsin. Hillary didn't campaign in, in Pennsylvania except for the last day and a few other jumps here and there. Hillary didn't campaign in Michigan. Uh, Michael Moore was telling Hillary for weeks, her campaign that is, for months, hey, I see something occurring on the ground in Michigan. I see something occurring on the ground in Ohio. You need to get there. You need to start putting resources there. Inside of uh, minority communities, you can't use your think tanks and your elitists in, in uh, New York to tell you how to cater to those communities. You have to invest in organizations within those communities who are going to then get those communities' peoples to come out in your domain and support you. Hillary did absolutely none of that. I saw on, the, on, on, on CNN, there was a woman in, in, I don't remember what community, a minority community came on TV and said, she's going to lose the community. She's not here. We're trying to reach them in Brooklyn and nobody will return our calls. This is a type of campaign that was run by somebody who left quite a lot of folks for granted. Now, I need to give one other exception about Hillary in the way this statement was made. In the way this statement was made, and I don't know if it's just because of the way it was cut, because remember, the way you cut a statement has a whole lot to do with how, it is, how one interprets it as well. Uh, I don't know if you remember the deplorables comment, but this, uh, the way this statement was cut allowed people to use this similarly as they did the deplorable comments, as if, Hillary was denigrating the people within these areas as opposed to denigrating the politicians and the, the, the environment that created that reality. And that is a distinction that Hillary has to make. Anybody who follows politics done right knows that I want people from all over. I, I, want, I want to engage the, 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 the racists. I want to engage the, 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 the sexist, the mis I want to engage everybody because I think everybody is changeable. And I think uh, in a lot of the ways that Hillary comes across, and I honestly do not believe that's in her heart, but a lot of times the way she comes across is as if she'll work with her people and leave those to hell with those because they're deplorables. Okay? I don't think she quite means that but all you know is what somebody says right continuing with the blog sometimes the truth does not seem kind but to understand the dynamics of the country and to prevent the demagoguery from politicians must be told hillary clinton did win in the area of the country where most people live and are more diverse it is a fact that where she won accounts for about two-thirds of the country's gdp you know what I looked it up. It's true. If you add up the GDP of everywhere that Clinton won, it is two-thirds of the entire country's GDP. That speaks a lot. I'll tell you why later. 
And uh, the Trump won a lot of counties. 2,626 counties won by Trump. You know how many counties Hillary Clinton won? 487. So he won about five times as many, more than five times as many counties as Hillary did. Places where few people live. But, you know, I mean, if you're counting counties, it looks like a good stat, right? Hey, I won five times more counties than you won. So I won the election. No, you didn't. You know, no, you didn't. Hillary Clinton won. First of all, let's be clear. Hillary Clinton won the minds and the hearts of more people than did Donald Trump. That's a fact. Our failed, uh, the, the failed portion of our constitution that allows us, that forces us to use something known as the Electoral College, that is a failure that has cost this country a whole lot. And that it has occurred, I think it is three times in this, this uh, century, actually three times in the last 20-something years, is a disaster for democracy. And it hurts us internationally as we try to tell people how they should run their own democracy. Anyway, continuing. Joe Scarborough lashed out at Clinton. He said, it is kind of hard to suggest that people in Wisconsin are retrograde and looking backwards and don't want good things for women and blacks and Hispanics and others other than white males when Hillary Clinton didn't even campaign in Wisconsin, Scarborough said. And there, there are no mirrors in the Clinton household. I want to address this young man in a little bit. Sometimes he's been making sense or he's been making sense recently. But sometimes you wonder where his head is. Um, elections and people's minds are fungible and it's something that's changing all of the times and it's something that's influenced by the news you listen to. And that is the reason why I always tell people to share these programs. Because your friends, those people that you think are crazy that are voting for Hillary, those people that you think are crazy, or rather gr crazy that are voting for Trump, those people that you think are crazy that are voting for all these people against your own interests, it's not that they're stupid, it's about the information that you're getting and how they get it. You have to help them. If you are one of the enlightened, you have to help them. If you're listening to this show and you know what we talk about here, you know what we talk about policy and the policies that are best for the people in the country, then you share that as well. You have to be part of the solution because it's sure as hell not going to be mainstream media because you know what they do. They're owned by the corporatocracy and they, they, I mean, they can't speak out against bad drug policy. They can't speak out against a whole lot of these bad things. And why can't they speak out against a whole lot of these bad things? They can't speak out a whole lot against a lot of these bad things because those people are advertising on their networks. We are not advertising on anybody's network. We, our network is you. So this is why we say share the programs. And this is why we also say, and I'm going to do a little break here before I go into the rest of the blog of the week. This is why we also ask you to go to patreon.com slash politics done right and be a part of subscribing to these types of programs. Personally, I subscribe to Democratic Underground. I subscribe to Op-Ed News. I subscribe to Daily Coast and several others. I mean, they only cost a few pennies uh, uh, you know, a month uh, for me. I'm asking you to do the same for Politics Done Right. It is very important that you support these sources of information. You know why? Because, again, we're not going to get the support from the corporatocracy. Anyhow, going back to the blog of the week, as far as Joe Scarborough is saying now, Joe Scarborough forgets one important thing about people's mind. It's, it depends on the information that you're getting, right? And he forgets that as the stress level of people increases, as those levels increase, they are subject to insinuations. They're subject to fallacies. So when Trump goes in to Michigan and Trump says, you see all these problems that you have here in Michigan, it's about those people that are causing those problems. And therefore, you need to come out in droves and vote. He had a technology center in, uh, in San Antonio. His technology center had software that was telling people in these, in these hundreds of counties, you know, remember by how many counties he won? They micromanaged just like Obama did in his election, but to an nth degree in all these other counties to ensure that those votes came out. I don't know if you remember Florida. People wanted to know where were some of these people coming out of the woodworks in Florida in all these little places. Florida looked like it was won for Hillary, but as soon as those micromanagements in these different counties came in, that wasn't the case anymore. So he did his homework. He did what was necessary for him to win. 
what you have to remember is if you are living in desolation and and not, and not only living in desolation, but living among a whole lot of people who look like you that are in desolation. And you can then point to others that don't look. You can, you can all, look, uh, prejudice and these kind of things are, 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 are knife edge things when people don't live among each other and when people don't communicate among each other. That's one of the reasons I've been talking about communicating with people all of the times. That's why I talk about when we unite Appalachia, the ghettos and the barrios, stereotypical but makes sense, that is when we destroy the plutocracy because when we come together and uh, forget about all these kinds of things that that uh, Trump is able to do to split us up that is when we win that is what he did that is what he did so when Joe Scarborough comes and he blames Hillary for all these things or even when I blame Hillary for not doing enough campaigning we have to remember that the that there were underlying issues that made people susceptible to vote the way they did look uh, he uses an example. Wait a minute. These people voted twice for Barack Obama. How could they be uh, racist? How could they be X, Y, Z? I mean, there are a lot of people who were racist who knowledgeably voted for Obama because Obama, Obama went ahead and made the financial case to these people. It was in your best interest to vote for me. There was, I don't know if you guys remember the story about in Pennsylvania when uh, one, of the, one of the people from Obama's team went out there canvassing, they said, uh, the, the, the guy went up to the door and said, uh, ma'am, who are you voting for? Now, the woman asked her husband. I don't know why she thinks she had to do that. But she said, honey, who are we voting for? And the, the husband shouted out, honey, we're voting for the N-word. So in other words, they're not mutually exclusive. And that is what Joe Scarborough fails to see. Okay, there are a lot of underlying reasons why people vote and it is a responsibility of the campaign and it is also your responsibility as progressives who want progressive policies out there to be a part of the solution. And again, of course, I'm going to tell you, share programs like this. Continuing with the blog of the week. Here is a reality. Many of the people in the red areas of the country have been duped into believing that the rest of the country are slackers. And caller, I'm coming to you next, are slackers. They have been led to believe that people are taking something from them when the converse is more close to reality. Most progressives have known for a long time that blue states have been supporting red states for a long time. And we don't talk about a little bit of support. The support the, blue, red states would die if they, would not get, if they weren't getting the tax revenues from blue states. And that's a fact. These, these states would die because they're net recipients of federal dollars, some of them by a whole lot. So let's remember that and remember to tell your red state friends and all of them when they're trying to call you slackers or when they try to say you're trying to get something for nothing, remind them that no, that's not how it has really worked in the past. That's not how it's working in the present. And for the foreseeable future, for a long time, these red states, because of the infrastructure that they have, because of the level of education many of them have, because of their investment that they don't make in their people, the investment they don't make in their other resources, they will remain states that depend on everybody else. In other words, welfare states. They have been led to believe that people are taking something from them when the converse is more close to reality. Most progressives have known this for a long time. Blue states have been supporting red states for a long time. The problem is that their inhabitants are currently too uninformed. They're too uninformed to know that. You know whose responsibility it is to inform them? It is your responsibility to inform. It is your responsibility to inform these people about their, I don't want to call it ignorance to sound presumptuous but to, to inform them of that which they don't know because if they knew that a lot of the people they would vote into office wouldn't be the people who are trying to hurt them who are trying to take away their benefits who are trying to take away their social security and all these other things it is important folks that you be a part of the solution what a lot of people believe for some reason is that hey we are not in control, but we are, my friend. I'm almost done with the blog, and I'm coming to you next telephone. Okay, any doubt of that is evident in a Twitter exchange I had with a right-winger. And I'm not going to read the Twitter exchange now because I want to get to the phones. One hopes that as more independent sources of information take hold, they will slowly educate and open and free minds of those enslaved 
by the ignorance imposed on them by their deceitful politicians and handlers. Folks, the telephone number is 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646 646- 7165812 I would love to hear from you Hillary Clinton supporters Bernie supporters Bush supporters Trump supporters I want to hear from everybody this is your show I listen to all points of view I give everybody the floor I give everybody the option to talk you know why because we none of us are going anywhere we're staying right here in this country and we're going to be living together in this country so might as well start get, getting along and where where is a better place to get along than right here on politics done right okay i'm going to 832 832 who do i have the honor of speaking with hi my name is wesley wesley talk to me my friend what's your name leslie wesley wesley how are you doing today wesley pretty good how about you great great talk to me my friend so i am a pretty diehard Sanders supporter. Yes, sir. And um, and I'd like to, to ask you, this is my first time actually listening to your shows. So you, are you pretty progressive? I am as progressive as they come. I'm likely the most progressive person in this, in, in the Democratic Party. I would believe myself to be that too. Do you, uh, let me get uh, your opinion on something. Yes, sir. So, we are very likely looking at a situation in 2020 where we have Bernie Sanders, mm-hmm. Elizabeth Warren, mm-hmm. Ford Booker, mm-hmm. Kamala Harris, mm-hmm. and many other people like Joe Biden right. all running. Now, let's, let's say all the corporates come together and they pick a candidate, but the progressives don't. Do you think that could be a very bad situation for the progressives? Yes, it would be. And let me tell you what we have to do in my humble opinion, my friend. First of all, Cory Booker is a no. Kamala, Kamala Harris is a no. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren, a maybe. Uh, Bernie Sanders would always be a yes, but my, my fear is Bernie Sanders is up in age, and in as much as his health is perfect right now, when you reach a certain age, you can, uh, you can, when sickness come along, it can come along rather quickly. And, and so that's my problem. So I think it would behoove us if for some reason Bernie ran again. I'll be frank with you. I will have to support him because he's, he's so much in line with my beliefs. But I would then uh, be cognizant that we better get a hell of a vice president that is right on in the same uh, wave with him. But yeah. for those people that you just called out there, uh, there uh, Curry Booker just has too many uh, drug, uh, drug uh, company influence. And Tamara uh, uh, Harris... Uh, there are some issues that I, I don't I don't have it nailed down completely, but there are some of the statements that she's made w- earlier on with regards to Medicare for all and so forth that concerns me. So the answer is to your question, in my opinion, yeah. is that you are absolutely correct that it would be terrible. But here's what I think we should do, my friend. I think we have the mantle right now. And I think progressives can go out there right now and start making the case. And those establishment Democrats that I speak to all the time, guess what they're turning into as we speak? Very progressive Democrats. They're, they're actually seeing that, um, you know, that we can actually stand up for what we believe. Because I'll be frank, I think most, most Democrats are really, I said I'm as progressive as they come. I think they are satisfied with all the positions that I take. But they believe that these are position, uh, positions that are unattainable. And I think because they think it is, they are positions that are unattainable, they go ahead and they go for the center or what is now the center. My theory is forget about that. Talk to people because I could bring to you poor Republicans who believe in every single tenet you and I believe in, not in the so- on social issues, but in yes. every single uh, economic issue that you and I believe in. I can assure you I can bring Republicans in. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I don't necessarily think that what you said was is an issue why uh, why corporate Democrats won't support uh, things that they believe in, like Medicare for All. Mm-hmm. Uh, another reason I think is they're corrupt. Yes. Like Cory Booker, he voted against Bernie Sanders' amendment to import drugs from Canada. Right. Uh, it's no surprise that he voted against it, and then all of a sudden you go uh, look at it. He's taken millions of dollars from the pharmaceutical uh, pharmaceutical industry. Yes. 
So I think that it's more about corruption. And also there's a group running uh, progressives around the nation, and I think you might be interested in them, and they're called uh, Justice Democrats. No, exactly who they are. Them. Absolutely. In fact, they I, have... Let me tell you, let me interrupt you for a second, my friend, and sorry about this, but I just want you to know that you found the right program You're because fine. I've had all the Justice Democrats in this area that were, that ran on my show at KPFT. I, I do two shows. I do the, the daily show uh, here, and we also have uh, on Thursdays, we do KPFT uh, 90.1 FM. Uh, we do th that show on uh, KPFT 90.1 FM, and I've had all the Justice Democrats on that show uh, in this area. I, I listen to KPFT every morning. Excellent. I'll be on Friday morning as well. And I'll be listening to J the Jimmy Dore show on Thursday morning. Great. Anyway, tell me some more, my friend. And by the way, folks, we still have open lines. Uh, right now, Wesley is the only caller, 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. We're pretty nice here. Whether you're progressive or not, I love to speak to Everybody, go ahead, Wesley. Uh, so, another uh, thing that I've been looking at is uh, progressives' pri uh, primary corporates. Uh, if you don't know, you have uh, Daniel Lipinski in Illinois. So he's getting primaried. Yes, he is. Joe Manchin is getting primaried. Yes. Nancy Pelosi is getting primaried. Exactly. Uh, Cory Booker, I do not know if he's getting primaried, but I hope he is. Uh, whenever his, whenever he's up for re-election, uh, but Diane Feinstein is also getting primaried by two progressives, mm -hmm. which is always good. Uh, so I think that my concern about the, 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 the are kind of running for the shoes. Then. Yeah, let me just tell you about California. California is a bit sticky, and let me tell you why they have that jungle uh, primary yeah. kind of a thing. And if you get too many progressives that split the vote, it can actually open the back door for a conservative to win. Ooh, you're, you're right. Anyway, continue, uh, but, my friend. Sorry for uh, that. I think that progressives have had, have had such a big effect on politics that you see people like Cory Booker and, uh, not Kamala, but uh, Kirsten Gillibrand actually come up and making tax money. Right. Because you know Cory Booker's going to run in 2020. Yes. I'm, pretty, I'm about 90% sure he's going to run. And I think that he had to say to himself, I have zero chance of winning the nomination and winning the presidency if I don't stop taking corporate prize money because the progressives will not vote for me. I think that's a very good thing. Now, I tell We're you what. I'm kind of scaring them to the point that they... Here's my concern about that, though, Wesley. I don't want to scare these people now into changing positions because as soon as they occupy the office, then they'll simply revert to form. In other words, what I think progressives have well, to... Yeah. yeah. What progressives, in my opinion, have to do is not fall for, oh, I've seen the light. In other words, if we can find, and I don't know who this is, maybe you can tell me who this is, other than Bernie Sanders and uh, the truth of the matter is I couldn't really tell you. Um, that, uh, I'm, I'm talking, when I say tell you, I'm talking about a viable candidate. But other, other than Bernie Sanders, I couldn't tell okay. you viably who I can suggest as that candidate uh, a populist that can win the Democratic primary and win the Democrat and win the the ticket overall. I think that it is something that we yes. ought to be looking for, and not only looking for but actively. I have somebody. Let me hear it. I actually have three people who I think could get out there and easily win the nomination. And they are uh, in twenty uh, twenty twenty. Okay, so we have uh, Ro Khanna. He's a representative from California, mm -hmm. uh, California 17th. He's okay. super progressive. Uh, Raul Grijalva. Mm -hmm. He is a representative from Arizona's third. Right, and I then him. I don't know his this last guy's district, but he's a state representative, uh, Lee Carter. Mm -hmm. I think he could win. He's super popular. He beat out uh, the my, uh, majority whip in Virginia. So... Uh, and I, uh, people talk about name recognition, and my rebuttal to that is Bernie Sanders. Right. Well, no you know, name. You're right. Look, nothing. Those three people that you called out, the only one that I know, and I actually know, per, I know Grijalda personally, 
Um, but those are the only, uh, I mean, Grijalda is the only one that I have that has name recognition with me. Now, here's the thing. If those people are going to run, uh, they need to be out there now. In fact, they need to start by, hey, come on, and politics done right, and let's get yes. your name out there. But, I mean, uh, yes. but what I'm saying is they, they need to come out there. But what I would like to, what I would prefer, uh, Wesley, is I would prefer to go ahead with a progressive, a bona fide progressive up, up front than somebody who just saw the tide and decide to become a progressive now. And that's how I feel about Cory Booker. That's how I feel about Kamara Harris. I am still, uh, I, I don't have that feeling towards um, Elizabeth Warren. I spoke to Elizabeth Warren at Netroots 2015, I think it was. And she comes across to me as genuine. She gave a speech on progressivism. And I, I play that all the time, or rather I, I, I blog that one all the time on my, on my system here. And that speech was one of the best, one of the best speeches I've ever heard on somebody uh, supporting progressive values and not only supporting progressive values, but giving a reason to progressive values and one that will actually reach over to rank and file Republicans. When I heard that speech, I, you know, I, I, I recorded it. And I blogged it. When I heard that speech from Elizabeth Warren, I said, that is the speech that I wanted to hear. But then she went ahead and supported the vote for, I think it's Monsanto or one of those, um, uh, one of those chemical <laughs> companies. And it was uh, like, oh, my God. But you can't judge them on one vote. Sometimes well, they just have the to one, one guy I mentioned, Ro Khanna, is a, uh, he got elected in 2016. Mm-hmm. He beat his incumbent. He took no corporate PAC money, only small dollar donations, mm-hmm. and beat his incumbent by, I think, by like 10%. Right. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, Bill Connor, he's been going on uh, the Sunday shows, I think, now mm-hmm. pretty much like once every two weeks. He's okay. been really trying to get his name out here, and I, I do personally think that he's planning something, not maybe 2020, but 2024. I tell you what, if you have out, this information in there, let me tell you, it would be nice for you to just throw that baby inside of our, um, inside of our, um, under the, the show here on Facebook Live, because what it'll do is that it'll turn a whole lot of people who see this not just live, but I actually see it as a vlogcast later on to look at it and start building some sort of a well, I don't have thing Facebook. about it. Yeah. Say that again. Oh, you're at work. <laughs> I don't have Facebook. Actually, I don't. I don't have Facebook. Oh, okay. So, are you coming over here? Uh, coming over on uh, Blog Talk Radio? Is where you're coming from? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Thank I you so kindly. I watched the Kyle Klinsky show. And great, great. <laughs> I want to ask you a favor. Right. Remember to share all these uh, programs, my friends. And those that are watching on Facebook Live or elsewhere, because remember, we're in three networks right now. So those that are on Facebook Live, please share it on Facebook now. It is important that you share, share, share. Right. And w- once again, I got to put a plug in for Politics Done Right and to tell you, we need your support. If we are to continue doing this type of thing here, we need you to go to patreon.com slash politics. Uh, done right, patreon.com, that politics done right, and, and subscribe. Be a member of Politics Done Right because we do good things. We're supposed to be going to Washington, D.C., and we'll have some special treats for the subscribers only when we're in Washington, D.C., with a special app that you'd have from Patreon. So come on, support us, and we'll get all this done perfectly right. Continue, my dear friend Wesley. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, or, or, do you have anything else to say, or that's pretty much it? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Thank you so kindly. I'll, uh, uh, keep doing what you do. You do a great, great work. Thank you so kindly, my friend. Thank you so kindly. Uh, okay, let me go ahead and go to... Oops, I'm, I think I may have cut your mic too quickly. Uh, w- were you saying something else, sir? Nope, I think you're gone now. Anyhow, uh, con- continuing, with, uh, continuing with this, I want to go to the website or not the website but go to uh our page and see what people are saying so that i can go ahead and put some of your voices on of course i would prefer if many of you will call and if you will call what's the number 646-716-5812 again that number is 646-716-5812 I'm sorry I don't have this by memory. And you know why? I, am a, I do another show, and you know, they all have their own numbers. And, you know, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. 
where I can remember all those numbers like I did before. So I'm coming to you guys now on Facebook Live and see what you have to say. So bear with me as I bring that up to see your input. Let's see. Going forward, we have Jules and you. They should have started a year ago. You know what, Jules? I think that is what I was kind of alluding to, to Wesley, and that you're, you're absolutely right about that. They should have started, if they wanted to run, that is, or if they were thinking about running in 2020 for the, um, 2020 for the presidential, yeah, it's kind of late now, but it's not impossible. We, we do remember that Obama, I think Obama ran in 2008, but I think he gave the uh, commencement speech in uh what when did he give that commencement speech i think he gave that commencement speech in hmm, i don't remember all right you should always post the number in the fb post okay um i got that kim now let me tell you that it's in the video if you look at the video the video has both my uh call in number as well as my um the call in number as well as my twitter account or twitter handle okay 832 you are hot come on in 832 Your line is on, 832. Hmm. 832. Hello? Yes, you're on. Hello? You're on. I'm on? Yes, you are. Hi. My name is Alexis Betancourt. How are you? How are you doing, Alexis? Welcome aboard. Hi. Um, this is the first time I call in, so I'm a little nervous. Please don't be but nervous anyway, because um, we just love new callers and we love all our callers. So, And we're very nice here. So no reason for being nervous because you know what? You're going to hit it on the nail. Okay. Um, I live in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been following politics for a long time now. And um, I was very disappointed um, on the elections. They were, the way it turned out, mm -hmm. I voted for Hillary. Um, I did not vote uh, for Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, he loved me the wrong way. Certain things that he said, and then certain things that that you know um, he said about Hillary that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, if he turns out to be the nominee in 2020, then you know I'll vote for him. But um, is there any possibility if? Trump gets, um, what do you call it? Impeached. Um, put out of the White House, impeached or whatever. Is there any possibility that the election could be reversed? Okay, we don't and have... And given back to Hillary? No, there's no policy within the Constitution that allows for that. Here's, here's, mm -hmm. here's a long shot, however, and this is, this is interesting. Here's a long shot. The long shot is... The uh, Democrats take over both the House and the Senate in 20, uh, 2018. In 2019, they impeach both President uh, Trump uh, and Vice President, uh, the, uh, I don't remember, Democrats you know, Vice President Pence. The House and the Senate what happens 20, then? I think uh, you have your, your speakerphone on, ma'am. So I'm going to just put you on hold for a second and then uh, then I'll bring you back in. But anyhow... Uh, so the, the, I'm, I want to put your mic back on after I, I make my comment. So if you go ahead and the Democrats control both houses and they go ahead and they impeach Trump and Pence and somehow get a conviction in the Senate, which would mean having to have more, a much more than a majority in the Senate because it's very unlikely that Republicans will convict a Republican. Then what happens then is the spe in, the, in the ascendancy, the Speaker of the House, which would likely be Nancy Pelosi, could become the president. And then that's how we get our first woman president. So that is a possibility. Unlikely, but that's a possibility. Uh, okay, I'm going to put your, your mic back on, ma'am. Are you there? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Great. I'm here. Yeah, that's the only possibility. Come well, on. Yeah, um, go, yeah, go ahead. Right. Is Nancy Pelosi still the Speaker of the House? I thought, I thought someone else had gone in her place. Okay, right now it's the Republicans who control the House. So the speaker is Paul Ryan. It's a Republican who's the speaker of the House. Right. However, if the Democrats win the House again in 2018, they will appoint a new speaker who will be a Democrat, and the likely person still will be 
Nancy Pelosi unless Nancy Pelosi were to get knocked off in a primary. That is very unlikely. So right. that is how that could actually occur. Mm -hmm. So let me let me put ask you to hold oh. a bit. Let me get to another caller, but you uh, stay with us. Let's see. Uh, four. Okay. Four six nine. You're on. How can I help you? Hey, Berdos, this is Charlie. Hey, Let's Charlie. Talk. How are you doing, my friend? Pretty good. Just passed through Round Top, Texas, going to Brenham. Great. I think you went to uh, to the so. South by Southwest, where you actually saw Beto O'Rourke. Is that correct? That is correct, and I uh, went to the Schultz uh, Beer Hall on uh, Red River, uh -huh. and uh, we estimate about 1,000 people showed up there. That is actually pretty good at a South by Southwest cramped. in that area. It is, considering how much other stuff was going on. It was very well attended, and um, the crowd was very enthusiastic, and I think you did a fantastic job. Um, the other thing that was interesting, and I think it had to do with South by Southwest, I got interviewed by BBC Radio. Great. And they were going around the entire crowd and talking to people. So uh, supposedly that's going to show up on BBC Radio sometime in the next week or so. If you happen to get the clip, go ahead and, and I get the uh, clip so we can hear it. Uh, the, oh, uh, yeah, I'll, if, if I can figure out where it is, I'll definitely try and get it to you. Um, there were a lot of really good interviews they were doing, you know, going through the entire crowd. And um, it was, they did a, a really credible job of, you know, asking questions, very pointed questions and getting fairly good responses, I think. So the fact that the BBC is interested and they were at South by and they were specifically interested in Beto, I thought was a good sign. That is excellent. Now, let me ask you to hold a second uh, because I want to get to a few uh, questions on Facebook sure. Live before the end of the program. So uh, we have Donna Kim Murphy. Hi, sure. Donna. I was just listening. I'm going to put these two mics on hold, and then uh, if you have to hang up, hang up, but I'm going to try to get back to both of you for a closing statement. But anyhow, we have uh, Donna Murphy. Haha. -ha. I was just listening to the program. Had I looked at the video, I would have seen that. Ah, that is about putting the number on the thing. Donna, you should call in sometimes and give us some. Uh, you, you, are, you always have good information, both on healthcare and otherwise. My question to you is whether you think women as a demographic, particularly women of color, have a real opportunity to push progressive politics and why if the answer to the question is yes why not push for women of color to occupy the highest office in the land first of all the answer to that is yes and whether we can push uh, it's not it shouldn't be whether we should push uh, the the uh, a woman of color to the highest office in the land it is uh, who do we push to office in the higher uh, in that higher office now let me tell you what I mean by that one of the reasons I supported Bernie Sand. I, I, first of all, I want to be. I want a woman serving as president. We are one of the only uh, industrialized nations where ye, a woman is yet to serve. But in my humble opinion, you don't just go for the first woman or the first person of color or, or whatever to serve for several reasons, and that is uh, a lot of times it's unfair, but a lot of times. That person that gets that office, just like Obama was a very special person in that when he went there, he was beyond reproach. And that even beyond reproached, he took spears that he should not have taken. Same, I would say, with women, whether women of color, white women or whatever. I want a woman in that office. As far as I would love to see a woman of color in that office as well. Uh, as far as the, de the Democratic Party is concerned, we know that the people who are the most sustained uh, the, the, the people that most support the Democratic Party are women of color but again uh, the choice has to be the person who best is best qualified with the policies for that particular job and the reason I'm saying that is you probably heard me say that I am not a fan of Kamala Harris I am not but I am a fan of many other women of color who would make a solid president uh, the same applies to, um, you know, to, to, to uh, Cory Booker. It would be great to get somebody, another person of color in the office. Cory Booker, in my opinion, just isn't that person. Why? Because I think he's owned by the corporatocracy. So the answer to your question, uh, Donna, is I want everybody to have equal access to that office. I will not, personally, I will not support somebody to uh, any office 
just because uh, of the uh, you know of the color of their skin or whatever, and as much as I want something to be there, because when they go up to that office, I'm going to give them the same scrutiny. I want to give a little quiet, a quick mea culpa here. Uh, Obama was the first black person to occupy the office, and there are a lot of times that, um, as as a as a an activist journalist, I wanted to say certain things that I thought he needed to uh, hear, and I didn't. I was guilty as hell because I think if we were more, if we had put a whole lot more pressure under the president, he would have put a whole lot more pressure under his party. A lot of things would have been better, and Hillary Clinton probably would have been president today. Uh, that's a long story to go in with the few minutes that we have left for the show. Going to other folks now. Uh, thank you, Donna. Please keep listening. Please share. Please share. Please share. It's important that we share these programs. It's so important. And by the way, when you disagree with me, you write it down or you put it in here. You call me or you do whatever and say, I simply do not agree with that at all. And I'll give you your hearing so that you can go ahead and tell people why you disagree. That's the name of the game. Sheila Black Grubman said she is a victim of years of mudslinging. Who, uh, who else has suffered from the kind of public abuse? You're right. Hillary has suffered from a lot of abuse, undeserved abuse, in the latter years as she has become more corporatocratic, corpor- whatever the word is. Uh, some of that she's put on herself. I, please, Hillary supporters, that statement is not made to be malicious at all. But I can tell you statements, I've I've blogged about it. Uh, At Daily Coast, on the front page, I have blogged very hard things on Hillary. I was always respectful to Hillary. But when I thought she did things like speak about, we need to leave the bankers alone. That was one of her statements. We're, We're fools for messing with the bankers because, you know, those are the kinds of statements that she made that I hit pretty hard. But when it was time to support a candidate for... Uh, and you can the record is there. You can go check everything that I wrote for her at Daily Coast. The support, 100% was telling folks, this is what I honestly believe we should do, uh, given that it wasn't my candidate, Bernie Sanders, who came about. So I, a lot of us did our parts. Okay, let's go to Michael Redden. Nancy Pelosi isn't winning her primary challenge. Really? You don't think so? Wow. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll have to take a look at that. Let's see. Uh, uh, Jules says, in my opinion, this country will not anytime soon put a person of color in office. GOP white women are not ready to unite in the growth of women. I'm concerned that Trump will be for another four years. I am also concerned. My cousin Ray Holder, I like you. Your new bag job. Thank you, my. Thank you, cuz. I appreciate that. Okay, Donna. Nobody's perfect, and we are all subject to bias. That may be discoverable or not. Accountability, accountability, accountability. You're absolutely right. Uh, Jules Anu again says they should have started a year ago. You're right, Donna. I respectfully disagree. All human beings are corruptible and must be held accountable. You're right. Uh, Elaine Schorl says, yes, uh, Schlentz. And yes, and she was talking about the big donators and those forming packs and blog posts as supporters. Uh, she was. Okay, I got to go a little quicker here. Michael Rudin said Trump tricked the whole lot of people. You're absolutely right. Michael Rudin. Okay, let me get to somebody else. Hi, Egberta. Norman Bunk. How you doing, buddy? Michael Rudin. Uh, Michael Rudin. Did you want the whole quote? Uh, yes, it's good that you have it in there because I don't have the time to read it. J.R. Talley. How about the $5 billion in free airtime? For That is correct. He got $5 billion of free airtime. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Uh, Dolores, uh, hi, and everybody else, hi. Okay, I'm going to ask, um, uh, let's see, the lady on the, I forgot to get her name. Ma'am, uh, go ahead and give me about a 10-second closer because our show is about to end. I met her. Yes. Alexis. Alexis, yes. thank um, you, Alexis. Listen, what do you, think, what, what do you think about um, Joe Kennedy III? I like Joe Kennedy. I like him. I don't think he's ready. I listened to him when he gave the speech, the State of the Union, the response to the State of the Union. I think he's good. He, his values are there. Personally, I don't think he's ready. Whether he'll be ready in two years, that's above my pay grade. Only a, a primary would say if he is, if he goes into the primary and fight it out. But anyway, give me a 10-second closer, uh, uh, Alexis. Oh, okay, thank you for hearing me, and I'm supporting you every month, so keep it up. Thank you so kindly. You have a wonderful day now. Okay, let's go to my good friend here. Uh, go ahead, my good friend, Charlie. Uh, give me 15 seconds. 
Hello. Okay, 15 seconds. I ran into a group that's pushing independent candidates in the state of Texas. They sent me a, a spreadsheet of independent candidates throughout Texas. I think we ought to look at supporting some of these. Thank you so kindly, my friend. Thank you so kindly. We were having a little technical difficulty here, but we're getting getting that out right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Charlie. Okay, folks. It's so interesting that the, the technical difficulties was actually my pad. I don't know when I actually turned that volume up. Anyhow, folks, thank you so kindly for being a part of Politics Done Right today. We had a, a wonderful show. We'll have another one tomorrow. And don't forget at KPFT 90.1, we'll have one on Thursdays. Look, folks, uh, the only folks that are going to make the difference is you. Uh, none of us have all the answers. That, that, that is definitely. And, and we are all, uh, as Donna said, you know, we, we, we're all fungible. We all can make mistakes. We can all do these things. The idea about it is this. How do you correct your mistakes? And what do you do when you make mistakes? Are you going to just uh, hunker down? Or are you going to just come out and say, Mia culpa, and go on from there? My, my way of being, I think, it is humbling to make mistakes. And, it's, uh, and, and it is also instructive to make mistakes. And after you've made mistakes, you correct them and you move on. I make a lot of mistakes. And you know what? I don't dwell on it. I just uh, admit it, ask for forgiveness, and move on. Folks, please do remember this is Politics Done Right. This is a progressive show. Please go ahead and share it over and over and over again. That is the way we get our, the performance up. That is the way we get people watching the show and learning. Uh, please do remember that this show is, needs your support. Go to patreon.com slash politics done right. Patreon.com dot slash politics done right. Give us the necessary support so that we can keep these things going. Uh, I mean, what are, what are the kind of things that we're going to do? Uh, we're going to be traveling times to D.C., uh, some of these primaries we're going to be going to. We need your support so that we can bring you this type of value. And, of course, we are also going to be using the Patreon app. Patreon has a new app that those people who are supporters, when we have things that uh, we go out there in the field for, it's only good for you. Again, folks, this is Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis. And you know what? We're two and a half minutes over and I am out. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four.